first the Marco Polo came out here in 1852. Now in 1852 it was the peak of the gold rush and there was a lot of pressure to get as many people out here as possible. And the Marco Polo it had over 900 people on board. Some 330 of these were in fact children. They had an outbreak of measles on board. 52 of these children died. This voyage was not typical. This was a huge death toll on board any ship. Now, the reasons for this is the Marco Polo was what was known as a double-decker ship. Instead of just having people in one level of the hold, it had two levels. So beneath normal steerage, there was another deck. This was called the Orlop deck. Sanitation was a bit more difficult and you certainly couldn't get any fresh air in. This style of ship was extremely unhealthy, but nonetheless they were used for a short period of time to get people out here. Very fortunately, the Marco Polo was the, in charge of a fairly adventurous captain, Uli Forbes, and he got the ship out from England in 68 days. And this at the time was record passage. The press at the time were praising him about how quickly the passage was made. Now the next one I'm going to talk about is the Ticonderoga. Same, same time, 1852 or thereabouts, had over 700 people on board. Once again, it had an all-op deck. In the immigration centre before they left, someone obviously picked up typhus. With large numbers of people on board suffering from typhus, a hundred died on the journey out. Obviously the surgeon and everybody, they just couldn't cope. The sanitation on the ship was terrible. They barely had enough crew members to work the ship. It limped into Port Phillip Heads and the authorities did not know what to do with it. So they moored the ship over Point Nepean and set up a quarantine area. And it was the Ticonderoga that led to Point Nepean being a quarantine station for nearly 150 years. Now I'd like to finish off this segment on the ships just having a talk about the SS Great Britain. This was a huge ship, it was two to three times the size of ships being built at the time. And the thing about the SS Great Britain, it was a sailing ship, but it had an auxiliary steam engine. One of the disadvantages, the coal was stacked on the deck for the steam engine. Steam engines were woefully inefficient in those days and needed huge amounts of coal. So. The SS Great Britain used to leave Britain with all its migrants on, there'd be six to seven hundred on board. The SS Great Britain made over 30 trips out to Australia over many years, and something like 20,000 people came out on this ship. It ended up as a hole for storing coal in the Falkland Islands and was recovered, towed back to England and is now restored.